This is screen capture video 11.5. In the last video, I was getting ready to talk about the royal family of Russia. They become important in uh, the discussion of sex-linked diseases because uh, Alexandra, who's the Tsarina of Russia, she married Tsar Nicholas II, who became the Tsar of Russia in the 1890s. Married him and had uh, four daughters and a son. And the son had hemophilia. And based on the information from the royal family of Russia and royalty of Germany and Spain, it was determined that Queen Victoria had a uh, gene for hemophilia. She passed it on to her children, which was then passed on to their children, some of them, and then eventually to a great-grandchild, Alexis. Alexander did not have hemophilia because it's a sex-linked trait. It doesn't show up in females as often as it does males, but she was a carrier, and none of her daughters had hemophilia, though some of them might have carried it, but because they were executed, I believe it was in 1918, in July, uh, at Katernburg in the uh, Ural Mountains, if I remember correctly, they, uh, they were never uh, studied because of their untimely deaths. The, the uh, communists executed them to get them out of the way and uh, bring in the, the communist leadership. Not only were they executed, they were led down to the basement of the home where they were staying early in the morning uh, with the doctor and two or three servants. All of them were executed and then the royal family was secretly buried. And then their remains were exhumed in the 1990s and through DNA they were able to determine uh, the royal family members that they indeed were buried there. But Alexis was a bleeder, at least on one occasion. It was thought that he was going to bleed to death. He'd had an accident, and he was bleeding heavily. And uh, the Tsarina, Alexandra, contacted Rasputin. He told her not to worry that he would live, and the next day he stopped bleeding. And she attributed that to him being a mystic, and having special powers, and uh, he had influence over her and the family thereafter, and that affected politics and, and history. The Tsarina wasn't well-liked in Russia because she was German. She was from German royalty, and the royals in Europe tended to, to marry other royals. Other sex-linked uh, traits, red-green colorblindness, that occurs in males more often than females. And that is definitely a sexual trait. It's a recessive. It shows up on the X chromosome. For a female to have, have it, it would be the same with the hemophilia. It'd have to be on both X chromosomes. Duchenne muscular dystrophy is a type of muscular dystrophy where the muscles atrophy. That is a sex linked trait. It occurs much more often in males than females. Something else that uh, I added in after I already had the uh, outline done. I'm going to go back and pick up on it. It's right there. It's the blue people of Kentucky. This is not a sex link trait. It actually goes along with uh, autosomal disorders and not of the sex chromosomes. But it's an interesting one. It's a, a recessive allele that causes people to have a blue tint to their skin, to their lips, and their nails. And it's because of uh, hemoglobin that uh, doesn't properly take on oxygen, and that causes the person to have a blue hue. And people said this was very noticeable. One of the members of the family, uh, 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 offspring or a descendant of uh, Martin Fugate, who's from France, orphan from France, who settled in eastern Kentucky, uh, stated that he was purplish in color. And uh, they lived, and some of them lived in their, their 80s or 90s, and uh, didn't seem to be greatly affected by it. But I remember hearing about this at a genetic seminar in St. Louis around uh, 1997, over 20 years ago. And uh, you can look this up. I provide this the hyperlink. You click on it, and you can find other articles. You might find those interesting. It's recessive, and it doesn't show up very often. I don't know of any other cases where this has shown up because of genetics, where a person has a blue hue. A person can drink uh, a silver solution and can settle into the skin and cause a, a silverish, bluish, gray color. And that happened to a person out in California. But from genetics, 
this is very rare. And the reason it happened here is because in the 1800s in Kentucky, uh, there were not a lot of people in the area, and families tended to intermarry. And uh, with a small gene pool, the recessive gene showed up with greater frequency. And this was a kind of a sore point with some of the people in this part of Kentucky and, and didn't appreciate being reminded of it and didn't like to be called inbred for obvious reasons. And there was a study done by one of the universities in Kentucky around 1960. They went in and did blood sampling and, and checked these people out. You can look at that on your own. Also, since I have a little bit of time in this video, just to, to touch on a few things here. Um, with the uh, idea of a trait, when you consider a trait, you want to think of that as a variant of a character or characteristic. When you think of the character or characteristic, it's a heritable feature, such as flower color, or hairline, or uh, hair on the fingers, or earlobes, whether attached or not attached. The trait would be attached earlobe, or detached earlobe, or white flower color, or purple flower color. When you uh, come across the term allele, and I've got that here somewhere. When you think of alleles, I have it here, it is an alternative form of a gene. Sometimes the genes themselves are called alleles. And as you've heard me say in the video, sometimes I refer to the genes as alleles. They generally have uh, two or more possible alleles for a given trait, such as purple flower color or white flower color, the genes for those. As far as uh, other things, I think I've mentioned the other terms fairly well with, uh, uh, let me see here, scroll down just a little bit, but that's all I have in that list. I've talked about codominance, um, incomplete dominance, those will all be included. I'll give some directions with the uh, announcement and uh, an idea of uh, types of questions I'm going to be asking on the test. I hope you do well, and this finishes up uh, year 11 for the time.